Hi there, Aiden here. We're going to talk about this app called Eat You Up, which is app number 8525. All right, so when I run this app, there's a lion and a giraffe. <coughs> and the lion says, yum, and roars. And then the giraffe screams and runs away. Let's watch it again. <coughs> now let's look at the code to actually see what's happening. Let me plug in my computer. There we go. So, line one is a fill command that drops this picture of a savanna. That's a place where lions and giraffes live um, in Africa, uh, here with a, a tree and a grass. Anyway, that's just an image from Bitsbox's um, image library called savanna. Line two is a variable called L, and that variable is actually um, equal to an image of a lion. So this stamp, lion2, is sitting at these coordinates, 200, 800. See, if I put my little cursor kind of towards the middle of the stamp, you'll see that the x value is roughly 200, and the y value is 800. Look at those little orange numbers at the top and left side of the screen. Those are the coordinates for the position of the lion. The 300 right here refers to the size of the lion. So if that lion is smaller, let's say 100, then it's a tiny little lion. Ah! And then the runs away. Let's put this back to 300. Ah! Line number three is a variable called g that's equal to a, um, a stamp of a giraffe. So you saw the giraffe, that was the giraffe graphic. The giraffe lives at x equals 550 and y equals 700. So those are just the coordinates for the location of the giraffe. And the giraffe is 500 pixels wide. So pretty simple. x coordinate, y coordinate, and size. Now, lines 5 through 8 are a function called step 1, and what happens here um, in this code is that the roar sound plays and the text yum appears at 100, 600, uh, right here, roughly here on the screen. Boom, boom, you'll see 100, 600. That's the point that you, uh, the text starts here in its bottom left corner, and it's 100 pixels high. So yum is this text on line 7, sound roar plays, and that's when the step 1 function is called. Now, we use a delay function, a delay command here on line 9, to call the function called step 1 2,000 milliseconds or 2 seconds after the app runs. So watch for it again, okay? I'm going to click this, and then 2 seconds later, the line's going to roar and the word yum is going to appear. Watch. So what was happening there is on line 9, the delay command said, wait two seconds, then run step 1. Step 1 says, play the sound roar and write the text yum. All right. Step 2 is a function where there's a sound of a scream, and it says to take G and move it to the coordinates 1,000, 700 over 500 milliseconds, which is half a second. Um, G if you look up here, is actually the giraffe. So what line 13 is saying is take the giraffe and move it over to the coordinate 1,700, which is around over here, um, in half a second. And that doesn't happen automatically. We use a delay command to run step 2 after 3 seconds. So what's happening is we're going to click, click this to play the app. After 2 seconds, the lion's going to roar and say yum. And then 1 second later, the giraffe is going to scream and go off the screen. Watch. And that's it. That's how that app works. These functions don't run by themselves. The delay command is what's running each function, and the delay command is what's keeping it from running right away. So let's actually look at the challenges for this app. The mini challenge is, can you make the giraffe wait longer to scream and run away? Hint line 15. So line 15 says 3 seconds or 3,000 in this case. That's how long it takes after you click this green play button um, for the giraffe to scream and run away. So if we want it to take longer, let's actually change this to 6 seconds. Let's try this now. And now, instead of just running away, he's going to wait 4 more seconds, and he screams and runs away. So if I want to change how long it takes for something to happen, I can always change the number inside of these delay commands. The super challenge for this app is, can you add a section of code that makes the lion chase the giraffe one second after the giraffe runs away? Whew. Well, that's a little more complicated. 
we want to add code that makes the lion chase the giraffe. Well, here's some code. Line 13 actually makes the giraffe move, right? So what if we added a move command to um, the lion? Hmm, we want to make the lion follow. Well, you know what I need is I need another function that makes the lion move. And I need to call that function uh, one second after the giraffe runs away. So I'm going to create a new function called, in this case, step three. It's like that. I need to put these empty parentheses and a little curly bracket there. Let's go to the next line. Now I want to make the lion move. So the lion, the lion's called L. Let's go L and then I need to move, right? So dot move. This is going to move the lion. Let's open the parentheses. And we want the, the lion to chase the giraffe. Um, let's move him to the same x coordinate as the giraffe is going to. So the giraffe is going all the way to x equals 1,000, which is way over here off the screen. Let's move the lion to the same x coordinate. And the y coordinate that the lion is currently on is 800, which is here. We don't want the lion to go up or down. We just want him to go right across. So let's keep the y coordinate at 800. And um, how long do we want the lion to take to run after the giraffe? Well, the giraffe moved in half a second. Maybe the lion should go the same speed just for now. We can always tweak it later. Let's make that half a second. And um, we don't need a sound for this. So let's just go down here. We'll close that function up. And now we need to call the function. We want to call that function one second after the giraffe runs away. The giraffe was originally running away three seconds after we started the app. Mm, so I need a delay command. I'm going to call step three. And I want it to happen one second after the giraffe runs away. One second after the giraffe runs away is 4,000 instead of 3,000. So we'll go to 4,000 and close this up. Now what's going to happen is after two seconds, the lion's going to roar and it's going to say yum on the screen. One second later, the giraffe is going to scream and the giraffe is going to run off the screen. One second after that, the lion is going to move off the screen too. I hope. Let's cross our fingers and see what happens. Ready? Ah! And that's what happened. See? The lion ran away, uh, just actually chased the giraffe right off there. Should the, should the lion make a, an evil sound maybe? Like roar again. So let's actually play a sound when the lion's going off. Let's go looking in our little sound library for um, a sound for the for the lion. It's a goose. Oh wait. Does it make a chicken sound? An alarm? No. Let's see. Actually, maybe there's a sound for lion. That's a pretty good roar. That's a pretty good roar too. Whoa. That's an insane sound. Let's use that. Okay, so we're going to go lion2 and uh, run this code. Oops, I forgot to put a little tick under here. There we go. And let's run the code. Ready? Ah! <laughs> oh, boy. Sounds like the lion might have caught the giraffe. All right. Hope you had fun. Thanks for watching this video. See you next time. Bye.